Okay, so uh, sir has asked me to speak on two topics. The most important topic is the palatal collapse because palate is the most important reason for snoring and sleep apnea. And therefore, if we understand the soft palate mechanism of collapse, then we can possibly treat it better. So when, since my last visit to Dhaka, this is the uh, new thing which is added. I have been talking about this for the last four or five years, but not in Dhaka. So I think this will be something interesting. And if I am able to make you understand how the palate collapses, then you can decide for yourself how much to resect or how much to reorient, which muscles to treat. So when we look into the uh, little too red, if the color can go a little less, quite red, but anyway it can work. So if you look into the oral cavity, we look at these structures, but this is the way the food enters the oral cavity. It is not the way the air enters. Air is supposed to enter from the nose at the back. Sound please. So when a person snores, the air is going from behind the soft palate. And when the air is going from behind the soft palate, the palate is collapsing at the back. So we have to understand the structures from the back, what happens at the back. Then only we can deal with the problem. So when the person is snoring, what is the movement of the tonsil? What is the movement of the soft palate? I'm just trying to recreate that. And if you understand and see the movement of the structures, like this is the tonsil, which not only moves behind, but also moves medially and superiorly. So this is the movement you can analyze from the front. And if the same movement you can analyze from the side, the tonsil is actually going behind, up and medially. So these are the three movements happening on the tonsil and the structures associated with the tonsil, which is the posterior pillar most importantly. So if we understand what is the movement, what is the structure, then we can possibly treat it in a better way. And now let's see it from this angle. So when the tonsil moves behind superiorly and you know, medially, it presses at the back. Back of the tonsil is what? Palatopharyngeus. And then the palatopharyngeus, which covers the upper pole of the tonsil, that goes and touches at the back. That's what we saw in the... This, this is what we just saw. Now, I just go behind and recreate. So this is the lower part of the soft palate. And now I'll just replay it. So this is the lower pole of the tonsil. This is the upper pole of the tonsil, which is covered with the palatopharyngeus. So when the person is snoring, this upper pole of the tonsil is going and touching at the back. And if you can see, this is the tip of the uvula, but the base of the uvula actually goes and touches at the back. So this, this is the area, base of the uvula, upper pole of the tonsil, which is uh, covered with palatopharyngeus. This is the area which actually creates snoring and sleep apnea. And therefore, we have to tackle that area. Now let's see what all muscles are involved uh, in the snoring and sleep apnea. So the soft palate has five... Uh, where's the pointer? Which is the pointer? So soft palate has got five muscles. Two from the top, which is thing. I don't know. So, two from the top, levator palatine elevates the soft palate, the tensor palatine tensor this tensor the soft palate. So these two muscles are very important in the phonation. So if my soft palate, if my levator palatine is not functioning, or somebody cuts my levator palatine tensor palatine, my voice will become like this. I will be speaking like a you know, cleft palate person, right? So that is the action of levator palatine and tensor palatine. So if we do not damage these two muscles, then possibly we do not have to worry about operating on the soft palate. Because I'll just show you next how these muscles work. But muscular tubule is a very, it's not a very significant muscle in the uh, phonation or deglutition. So if my levator palatine and tensor palatine are safe, then my deglutition is safe, my voice is safe, then there's absolutely no problem. Now if you look at the action of the tensor palatine, now the tensor palatine is quite anterior. We saw that this is not the area for uh, snoring, but the tensor palatine is quite anterior. So
So it never comes in our way. So when you are operating on the lower part of the soft palate, tensile palatine is quite caudal, uh, sorry, cranial or anterior. It does not come in the way. Levator palatine again is behind that, but it's still above or anterior to the area which is important for a snoring. So you can still, you without damaging these two muscles, you can still operate on the lower part of the soft palate. Because the as we saw, this is the tensor palatine, levator palatine, but the area for snoring is much lower and behind. So these are the areas you can actually uh, resect, reorient, whatever you want to do, you can do in these parts of the uh, soft palate without any problem. Now, anterior pillar, the palatoglossus. The palatoglossus also pulls the soft palate forward, so it's a good muscle. It does not contribute to snoring and sleep apnea, so there's no reason operating on the soft palate unnecessarily, it does not come in a way. It is only the palatopharyngeus, which is the muscle behind the tonsil, and this is the muscle responsible for obstructive sleep apnea and snoring. So if we have to operate, it is only the posterior pillar or the palatopharyngeus which is important to understand. And now if you go back and uh, look at the surgeries which has the device for snoring and sleep apnea, almost every surgery, around 30 of them, are based on the posterior pillar or the palatopharynges. And recently my, uh, my own technique is also accepted for publication. It will come very soon in the Indian Journal. So this is the line below the levator and the tensor palatine. This is the area which actually contributes to snoring and sleep apnea, the base of the uvula and the upper pole of the tonsil which is covered with palatopharynges. If we remain in this area and make sure that we do not go high, then the problems with soft palate, which is of revulsation and voice change will not happen. The moment we understand that, see how big a gamut of uh, you know, patients are open for us to perform surgery. Another very important thing is that we do not understand the tonsil size. We only grade them as grade 1, 2, 3, 4 but by what we look from the front. But tonsil is a three-dimensional structure. It has got a height, it has got a width, and it has got a depth. So we cannot only decide on the tonsil by looking at the tummy of the tonsil. We also have to look at the height of the tonsil and the width of the tonsil. And therefore, this classification is not enough. This is only based on one, you know, axis. So we have to look at the height of the tonsil and the width of the tonsil. Because if you can understand, if the shoulder of this man is wider, then this posterior pillar will be pushed more behind. If the head of this tonsil is much bigger, as we see in a lot of endophytic tonsils, we keep on pulling and the tonsil keeps on coming out from the superior pole. We all have seen that. So if that is there, then that also creates a lot of problems. So this is exophytic tonsil, which we normally understand that this is a tonsil which will obstruct. But if this is the cause of sleep apnea, then all the the sleep endoscopy is soundless. Then all the sleep endoscopy should have something like this. Obviously, we do not see such kind of sleep endoscopy most likely. So this exophytic tonsil is not so common. But as we understand, when the tonsil increases in size and become endophytic, it pushes the soft uh, the, uh, the soft palate behind. And therefore, if the tonsil is endophytic, when it moves, it pushes the posterior pillar quite back like this as I showed earlier also and this is the major cause and when you see sleep endoscopy now see this is the soft palate this is the lower part of the tonsil this is the upper part of the tonsil upper part of the tonsil covered with the palatopharyngeus so this is endophytic tonsil and we have to understand that even if we do not see a large tonsil inside the oral cavity but still the endophytic tonsil could be a cause of the sleep apnea and therefore in the drug induced sleep endoscopy we see that and tackle that. So now, once we remove the large tonsil, what will happen? The anterior and posterior pillars will come closer. So the net effect is that the space behind the posterior pillar will increase. And that improves the snoring and sleep apnea. So that, therefore, tonsillectomy is an integral part of sleep apnea surgery. You possibly cannot do a surgery of sleep apnea without a tonsillectomy. So tonsillectomy will help you in all the ways because it will take the volume of that area and it will help the soft palate, the posterior part of the posterior pillar to come forward and create a lot of space. Now if you look at the thorasa sound decision, 
Once you look at the different types of collapses, if you look at different types of collapses, now this is AP collapse, it's the most common collapse. Now what is AP collapse made up of? What is the structure causing the AP collapse? So as we saw, this is the base of the uvula. And base of the uvula along with posterior pillar. So what part of the posterior pillar is actually going behind? The medial part of the posterior pillar. So base of the uvula and medial part of the posterior pillar, that causes AP collapse. So if you remove the uvula and remove the medial part of the posterior, uh, the palatopharynges, you take care of the anterior posterior collapse completely. And AP collapse is the most common collapse. In simple snoring and mild sleep apnea, the patient is not very obese. 99% chance is that you will get an AP collapse. So it's important to understand that AP collapse, what structure? Base of the uvula and medial part of the palatopharyngeus muscle. Now if you look at the lateral collapse. Lateral collapse is again nothing but the lateral part of the palatopharyngeus muscle. The vertical part of the palatopharyngeus muscle, when it collapses, yeah, now you can see here, if you just follow it, what is the structure here? That's the uvula. That is the medial part of the paratopharynges. That is the tonsil. That was the lateral part of the paratopharynges. Right? So ultimately, whether it is AP, whether it is lateral, it is ultimately the paratopharynges muscle. And what is circular? Circular is a combination of both. So by and large, you are tackling with the paratopharynges muscle, whether medial or the lateral part. And therefore, now, Imagine that if somebody has a lateral collapse and you pull it laterally, it will start collapsing anterior posteriorly. If it is anterior posterior collapse, you pull it anterior posteriorly, it may start collapsing laterally. So let's assume that every collapse is a circular collapse and we treat every collapse as a both AP as well as lateral, then nothing will be left. So my technique is based on this concept only that we treat every collapse as a uh, both AP as well as, as lateral collapse. This is the area responsible for swallowing as I showed and we only need to work on the lower part. So if you now have a look in the same, uh, same uh, cavity from the superior angle as you saw, the way air goes inside, this is anterior, this is posterior, this is the tonsil, uvula, palatoglossus, palatopharynges. Now if we remove the tonsil, the palatopharynges will go forward. That's what I am going to do, show you. So the moment you remove the, this is the anterior uh, pharyngeal wall, lateral pharyngeal wall, the moment you remove the tonsils, the posterior pillar can go forward. Now we have got pericomandibular raphe on each side, which is always anterior and lateral to the soft palate. So if we suspend the soft palate from one side to the other, across the midline, because we know that we are below the level of the levator palatine, so if you suspend the soft palate at the level of the base of the uvula, like a suspension bridge, then the soft palate cannot collapse anteroposteriorly or laterally. So this is the, you uh, suspend the soft palate from the right pericomandibular raphe across the midline to the left and then come back to reinforce it. This is the treatment for AP collapse and if you also suspend the lateral wall with the same, then you can take care of the lateral collapse as well because this structure is both anterior and lateral. So the moment you suspend the soft palate, both AP as well as lateral, both the uh, you know things are taken care of. So now, now in this case we have removed the uvula. This is the pterygomandibular raphe. From pterygomandibular raphe we come to the uh, superior pole of the tonsil. Then take the whole, the, I have already dissected the soft palate here, the posterior pillar and I am taking it laterally so that the AP part collapse will be completely taken care of by this and then okay. the moment you go laterally you get, take care of both AP as well as the lateral collapse because now this whole, whole palate of is, is now hooked laterally. The AP part was um, uh, you know, transposed laterally, so AP collapse is gone and the lateral collapse which could happen is also taken care of by this. Neither it can collapse anteroposteriorly nor it can collapse laterally. The then, come again. 
Now this uh, this is the lateral collapse taken care of for now further augmentation of the AP collapse going from right telecommandular rapid to the left across the midline go to the other side then again go to the posterior pillar again take care of the whole posterior pillar from here so you took care of the lateral collapse on the right side, came from right to left, this part cannot collapse anterior posteriorly, then again went from left pillar to the posterior pillar. Now there is no raw area, so no chances of stenosis, and then come back to the right side. little more for the so this is like now a suspension bridge, your lateral collapse was taken care of, AP collapse cannot happen because you have gone from right to left across the midline. And extra length of the soft pellet you have already resected. So this is like a suspension bridge. Now it can move sideways, so when the person swallows, it can move up, but it cannot go behind. Because if it goes behind, it will cause sleep apnea and snoring. If it moves up during swallowing, that's what we anyway require. The levator palatine still can pull it sideways, but it cannot collapse posteriorly because it cannot fall that way. Now, if this is a tonsillectomized patient, this is the uh, telecomandular rafting. So here, we need not do anything for the lateral collapse, pure AP collapse. And this is possibly the treatment for snoring, simple snoring when the tonsil is not there, when the lateral collapse is not there, when the person is not obese. So if you can, where the AP collapse is the only problem, I'll just fast forward. So you go from right telecomandular rafe, pull it, then go across the midline at the base of the uvula because we have seen that that is the area where which collapses. Now go right till the left telecomandular rafe. Now right to left. What it helps is it, now it is not letting the soft palate fall posteriorly, but where, while swallowing, the levator palatine can always move it upwards. So this movement is not affected but it cannot collapse posteriorly. Then you go back from the uh, left to right again, the same thing. And the net effect, I, as I just showed you, now it will not collapse posteriorly. So the vibrations and complete collapse which can happen posteriorly will not happen. So this is, and while a superior movement of levator palatine is possible, there is no obstruction to that. So swallowing is not a problem, voice is not a problem, but snoring is taken care of. So, and it also prevents the collapse of the high baseband because there is no surgery for high baseband. Lower baseband may perform the surgery. So this this is a new development in the last four five years, and I thought I'll uh, share with this. So if you have any questions on this, I'll be very happy to take.